TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be, man. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right above me, matter of fact, this is my Twitch. We're not going to be posting highlights anywhere. They save, as you can see. You can just go back on here and replay them, fast forward, rewind. Twitch has all the material before. Before Look, police interceptors, y'all ain't even seen that yet. Come out Friday. You know what I'm saying? But y'all can go watch it here early if you need to. Uh, don't forget we do got Patreon. We watch this Monday through Friday. This is where we post stuff that we cannot watch on YouTube. Uh, Line of Duty, Bodyguard, Derek, Luther, Only Fools and Horses. Things of that nature. Don't forget we do got merch as well. Got mine on. The link to all of this is down in the description. Can't pay. We'll take it away. Season 4, Episode 2. I hope we get spicy, man. Last season was kind of, you know what I'm saying? Legitimate. One in seven people in the UK are now self-employed. But they earn, on average, 40% less than company employees. The rising cost of living... No matter. You're still free of the con constructs of... Of, of, of society and things of that nature. Thing ...has left over half of all self-employed workers in worrying levels of debt. That's true. Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are High Court Enforcement Agents. Stuart McCracken is like... He like the, the new lead for season four, huh? They have 11 years experience between them, seizing property and collecting debt. All right, this is Dolph Lane. This is Dolph Lane. We're looking for a garage, apparently. Today, they're in Liverpool to serve a writ on... They in the pool? Oh, it's about to get negative. Let me sit up. Let me sit up. ...sole trader, Michael Burton. Mr. Burton, a mechanic, owes just over £2,700 to a former colleague. We're looking for MLB Motors. Putting they got the strap. Going on. <laughs> There's a garage at the address they've been given, but it's now called Delph Lane Autos. I'll ask Eagle Plant Repairs if he's ever heard of this guy. So the team ask a neighbouring business for help. Hi there. I'm looking for M&B Motors. The, the Motors? Yeah, the Michael Burton. Is that Michael Burton? Yeah. Well, this is it, mate. This is it. All right. Let's go have a chat. The agents are in the right place, but the defendant appears to be trading under a different company name. Apparently, this is it. Which means you can't if Mr. From... Burton can't or won't pay today, the team have the right to remove goods and assets from his business to offset the debt. Hi, mate, you all right? We're after Mr. Burton. Mr. Burton. Michael, Michael Burton. Burton. Isn't there? I've had confirmation that he is here. He's not. The man they meet no, denies Michael. all knowledge of a Michael Burton. Well, I'll tell you where we are. My name is Mr. Victor, I'm a court enforcement agent. Yeah. So... So you try and get him on the phone if he's not here at the moment, because we're here to take control doors. I've got English. Right, OK, we've already spoke to the neighbours, and the neighbours have confirmed that he's here. What, what neighbours? The neighbours in the area. What area? This area. <laughs> right, well, I'm going to right. okay, What's your name, sir? I'm Sanya. It's going to be All right, that's fine. Michael Burton. The man refuses to reveal his identity. Because we're here now to take control of goods, sir. Taking all of my stuff, mate. Right, so can you prove who you are then? What do I need to prove who I am? Because we've got a writ for this address, you see. Despite the man's denials, Stuart and Vic have the right to make peaceful entry into the property. Doors open. You're walking in here, mate. You've got no right. Okay, so if you just explain who you are then, that's I've fine. just told you, tell me what you want, and I'll tell you what you need to know. The man demands to see a copy of the writ. Let's, Let's get some the proof. Address. The address is for you, sir. The address, yeah. Let's have a look then. I don't know okay, who you are, sir. Well, what do you want to know? 
I'll, I've asked for some ID for yourself. Well, I don't need to do anything. Okay. To so we'll, we'll, we'll... Let's show you the root, right? I'm yeah. above it. Let me just show, the, 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 show, show the, me what's yeah. on the thing then. I'll explain. Show yeah. me what's on it then. If it's on to do with you, sir, then why are you so interested? What are you doing then? Get out. Have I already explained? Well, I've told you. No one's here at that name. Well, so I don't believe that. you, sir. Well, don't believe me. Don't okay, that's fine. So I'll carry on taking your goods. You won't at all, mate. Let me just put you that straight now. Don't step in there. All right. Or what? hold. Let me explain to you. For us to show you who's on the root, yeah, yeah, yeah. you gotta identify yourself. I ain't gonna lie, he's standing on business. Stuart ain't stepping in there. Because if you know what you say, are you, you Mike? Uh, uh, are, are, are you Mike? Right, do, do you have you got it? any ID just to prove I that? I haven't got any ID on me, no. You I don't haven't. have a driver's license or anything like that? Not on me, no. Well, in that case, yeah, then, well, we will have to take control you of goods. You will not on the all. It's yeah, sadly... I you don't can't, okay. you can't, unless you show me what's on that paper there, you won't be coming in here. I don't. And that's as simple as that, mate. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you that right now. As the man refuses to confirm his identity, Stuart turns up the pressure. Are you Michael? No, I'm not. I've just told you that three times. I'm not Michael. I don't my believe name you, is Bradley. Yeah. So fuck off then if you don't Does believe that. me. I will, because you're doing me head in. I'm not going anywhere. You fucking won't be stepping in here, mate, to tell you that now. I'd get fucked off. Why have you been so defensive? Why? Why? Because I hate people like you, because you're horrible. In this job, you're going to come across all walks of life. Some people are going to be truthful and honest. Some people are going to be barefaced liars. It's water off a duck's back to me. If somebody wants to lie to me, it makes me feel better. Water off a duck's back? Stuart, you got to be like early 30s. Why are you using these elderly euphemisms? Once I found them out. Is that the right word, are you? The man is determined not to let Stuart and Vic inside the property. So fuck off. Not good anyway. Not a meat. Let's have a look then. Let's have a look. I don't know who you are. Let's so. have a look. You guys look in. You want to show me something? Let me have a look at it. I don't know who you are. Well, I'm sorry, well, you don't know who I am. You don't know who you're looking for then, do you? I don't know exactly who I'm looking for. Who? Michael Burton. Tensions are rising. Vic decides to call the police. I'm the manager of the Victor, I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. We're here to execute a High Court writ at a industrial unit in uh, Merseyside. So you know where you at? This ain't Merseyside. He's not a scouser. He said Merseyside. Uh, we need some police assistance, please. The defendant is getting very aggressive, threatening us. Private property on mm -hmm. your way. Mm -hmm. Private property got High Court writ to be here. Yeah, who's it for? Well, Michael Barton, as I've already explained. Exactly. Yeah. No one's here at that name, I so don't we can't so. prove it. I don't, believe, I don't believe you. Well, don't believe me. But while Vic is on the phone, the man becomes even more agitated. He's about to kick off. Move the car so you can't get his car out. Stuart's van is blocking other cars from getting out of the drive. You want to move the car now? Which I'm going to start moving stuff for you. I'll only move your stuff out of my way in a minute. Move the stuff now. Which Get the stuff move. Yeah, Get okay. the van yeah. moved now. No problem at all. Yeah. To yeah, keep no the problem. peace, Stuart agrees to move his vehicle. Yeah, I'll move the van. No problem at all. In this job, you're going to meet everybody who's been in debt. And some people are aggressive. Um, it can be physically aggressive as well. But it's something you've just got to learn to take in your stride. Vic keeps the police on the line. Well, yeah, he doesn't want to show any, any, any IDs. He's shouting now, mate. He's uh, going off his head, yeah. But as Stuart moves the van, the man decides to take action of his own. He's threatening to block us in. He's not threatening to block us in, mate. This is getting ridiculous. He forces Stuart to reverse his van towards the busy main road. I would have just stopped. You hit the van, that you hit the van. I can do with some assistance straight away. He's now he's in his vehicle. He's ramming our vehicle out of down the drive. He's threatening my colleague to get out here. Yeah, what it is? Is that a news crew? Oh no, that's the crew. They're gonna cause an accident out here. A straightforward debt collection has quickly turned into a volatile situation. With the man's aggression escalating, will the agents be able to keep the situation under control until the police arrive? One, he's, he's trying to. I'm on my way, mate. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. That boy voice. Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor we're looking to serve a writ on sole trader Michael Burton, Elmore's who owes a former colleague £2,700. 
We're after Mr. Burton. Mr. Burton. Michael Burton. But the man they met at the address listed on the writ told them that he wasn't Michael Burton. Are you Michael? No, I'm not. I've just told you that three times. I'm not Michael. I don't My believe name you, is Bradley. Instead, he blocked them from entering the garage. You fucking won't be stepping in here, me to tell you that now. I'd get fucked off. Vic I called the... I Stuart believed him. Hey, you ain't got no choice but to believe that man. Police. Uh, we need some police assistance, please. But then the man tried to run the team off the property. Ramming our vehicle out of down the drive is threatening my colleague to get out here. Yeah. I'm on my way, man. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Now, just as Stuart manages to reverse the vehicle safely off the drive, a team of police officers arrive on the scene. Stuart and Vic explain the situation. We're high ground enforcement agents. We've been insisted to execute a writ of control at this address. We've confirmed from the garage behind. That is Michael Burton. This is Michael Burton's business. We just want to know who that gentleman is, if he's Michael Burton or if he's just working for him. No. Vic hands the officer a copy of the writ. With police officers present, the man is finally forced to reveal who he is. Michael Burton. What? What's your name, mate? Eh? <laughs> yes, of course it does. Michael Burton. Yeah. <laughs> when he's been questioned, he's actually come out and said that his name is Michael. So it's the defendant we're after all the time. So mine and Vic's hunches straight away um, uh, have come clear. Do not. Tell another lie. lying to anyone. You've been lying. You've just lied to me. Do not lie again. These will deal with you appropriately, according to the documentation they've got. Yeah. We're going to stand here. You're going to behave yourself. Right. Yeah, right. Hey, you just got a little boy. That's to. It's like when you're in school and you're bullying people, and the teacher come around. That's what it looked like. The teacher that you got respect for, though, kinda. Having confirmed the man's identity. The agents must now recover the two thousand seven hundred pounds they came for. Can I come in now? No, you can't come in. No. I've got a writ here, mate. No, to come in, yes. No, you're not coming in. I'm coming in. I've got an icon writ here in your name. Yeah, in right. my name, yeah. With the police present, Mr. Burton has no option but to allow Stuart and Vic onto the premises. I haven't got money, so what okay. do you want me to do? Well, then we're going to take goods. You can't I'm take to... goods, can Why you? can't I? Michael now you claims that the goods in the garage don't belong to him, but to a fellow mechanic. If he can't prove this is true, the agents can start seizing some of his assets. Oh, right. Mate. Michael, Michael, have a word with me. I can't, no, pay, you. I can't me. pay you. Listen to me. I can't, can't pay you. I haven't got it. Okay, calm down. I can't Listen, do nothing. Do you want, want me to help you? Do you want me to help you? Can you help me? Yes. yes. Can you help me? Yes, I, I can. I can't pay you. Okay. I haven't got it. Calm down. you got to calm down. I can't because you're okay. stressing Listen, me. I can't Listen. pay it. Michael claims he has no means to pay his debt. But Vic needs him to calm down so that he can negotiate a payment plan. Just calm down. Listen to me. I can't give you something that I haven't got. Calm down. I can't, I can't do it. I haven't got it. What can you pay? Ma, I don't want. No, no, no. What can you pay monthly? Think down hey, with a clear. Calm down and think I with a clear. I can pay a hundred pounds a month. But before a payment plan can be put in place, Mr. Burton must pay a substantial amount today. You're not going to like this, but I'm going to tell you. But let me finish, right? It's got to be a thousand pounds today. Try it, mate. Listen to me. No, listen, no, no, listen, listen. I can't get it. I can't get it. Okay, what can I you get? get it. What can I you get? Six hundred? I can get. I can, I fucking. Oh, fucking hell! I don't have the money. What can you pay? Two hundred. I can pay two hundred pounds a month. No. I can give you six hundred quid, but you aren't taking nothing today. Okay, listen right? to me. Listen. I, okay, Michael. I, Michael, I'm listening to you, and I'm listening to you. Okay, and I'm, I'm all right with that. I'm going to make a phone call now. Michael has finally come up with an offer. But if the claimant decides it's not enough, the agents will have to seize items from the garage. Hello? It's Vic. Vic calls the office. But while he's on the phone, Michael's parents and wife arrive to help raise the funds. She's going to get you the rest now, mate. Go and get the 118. Okay. Right, you never walk alone. 
Michael's wife goes to the bank to get the rest of the money. Minutes later, Vic hears back from the claimant. All right, thank you very much. Michael's offer has been accepted. 200 a month, 200 600 today. That's all I've paid. This is what they've accepted I can't, it. I can't pay the other 200. I can't pay that 200 now till next month. No, you won't. Michael. You know what I mean? Jesus, That's mate, you, mu you must let me speak. I'm trying to talk to you here. It's going to be a control goods agreement, which means the stuff stay here. Michael's business is safe for now. But if he doesn't keep to his repayment plan, the agents have the right to return and seize goods. A quiet day at the office. <laughs> but seeing Stuart making a list of goods starts to irritate Michael. Michael's mother steps in to calm her son down. <laughs> 20 minutes later, Mr. Burton's wife returns with the remaining cash. One. Two. Do you want to pay more? No, I don't. <laughs> As always, appreciate you what you've done. Stuart and Vic's perseverance has paid off. So you you can kick and scream all you want, can't you? Yeah. End of the day, you're going to start paying. Still get the cash, don't we? Yeah. But if Michael doesn't keep up with his repayments, the agents will be back. The number of elderly people living in rented accommodation is on the rise. But with rents and living costs increasing year on year, nearly half of all retired people are struggling to live off their pensions. People aged over 60 have an average debt of more than 18,000 pounds. 8 a.m. Isleworth, West London. High Court enforcement agents Steve Pinner and his son Ben are on their way to carry out an eviction. So this morning we have a writ of possession against Mr Peter, Malcolm, Norman and one other. It appears to me that it will be a simple end of tenancy. For the last few months, the tenants, Mr and Mrs Norman, have been struggling to pay their rent. What number? 18. The county court has sent the tenants an eviction notice, but the landlord has now applied to the High Court to speed up the eviction. The tenants must leave today. Good morning, Mr Norman. Yes, sir. My name's Ben. Uh, We're here today to repossess the property. Mr Norman has the county situations. court's papers in his hand. According to this, sir, it's if you stay beyond this date, your landlord can ask the court to send a bailiff to evict you. Uh, according to the county court in Brentford yesterday, no such application has been made. Sir. That is the county court. We are from the High Court. I don't understand what's happening here. So we were told that we'd be here for another week and that no application has been found anywhere and therefore... For the, for the county court bailiff, yes. So the matter's been transferred and we are here instead and there is well, no notice of that as it does say on your possession order. Well, I think that's very unfair, don't you? Well, I'm afraid I don't make the rules, sir. This is unbelievable. I'm being slung out my own. I don't know what to say. I, I can't believe this. We're leaving this place because we can't afford to pay the rent because we don't get enough money. Mr. and Mrs. Norman have lived at the house for seven years. They now have one hour to pack up their essentials and leave. I just can't believe it's come to this, you know. It's 8 o'clock in the morning, we've we, we got an hour to get out. I'm afraid so. Are you listening to this, darling? We've got an hour to pack a bag and go go to the garden. Yeah, this, this one, these, see, these be the ones right here. They're about 60, 70 an hour. How? To go to the council. All right, that's thanks for doing what you do. What's the time? We'll do a time check. <laughs> it's 8.20. 8.20. Well, thank you.
when that first opened the door, I thought, what was going to happen here? He's standing with a piece of paper and a script to read. I'm thinking, what's he going to say? Mr. Norman and his wife are both retired and receiving housing benefit. I've got your medicine, Dolly, in here. But following recent welfare cuts, their benefits don't cover the rent. Do you have a car? I'll pretend you didn't mean that. If you had money for a car, you'd be able to pay his rent, wouldn't you? Don't you think? <laughs> Mr. Norman covered the shortfall in his rent with his personal savings until they ran out. He has tried to find work, but failed. It seems to me, sir, that all the people who've done all the work and paid all the money are the last people who get what they've paid for over their working lives. It's true. Being dependent on benefits is not something that Mr. Norman true. has been used to. Are you local? We moved here from Q. Q. Uh, OK, yeah. That's not to say we, we uh, my previous job was a caretaker and the house came with it. Job. It wasn't that I was rich and it was my house. Okay, I take it where? <laughs> uh, just over the other side of Kew Bridge, where okay. the, uh, the big red brick houses. I was there for 19 years. Wow. Mr. Norman hoped the council would step in before the eviction took place, but they've been told they could be rehoused over a hundred miles from home, where rents are cheaper. Honestly, at this point, you gotta do what you gotta do, don't you, to just survive. You know what I'm saying? You have to. In three months' contact with the housing department, House of Council, I've had one phone call. And that was to tell me I might be going to live in Birmingham. Oh, that's not bad. The reality of the situation is beginning to take its toll on Mr. Norman. Been staying out of the cornflakes, a nice glass of wine. And it's not my usual time, I assure you, that's okay. Circumstances being what they are, one tends to. My bad, hold on real quick. I'm gonna edit this out. I need to. I'm getting a phone call. phase of it. It's, it's it's not fair. It's just not bloody fair. Well, but all the years we've been collecting our favourite films, what's going to happen to them? Despite the couple's circumstances, Steve and Ben must complete the eviction. So you've got clothing, medication. And I, you can't even, I know a lot of people be like, okay, just because the, they are here, it's easy to point the finger at them. It ain't them. They just doing their job. They can't do nothing about it. If they don't do it, they get fired. As simple as that. You know who I'm blaming? The, the, the benefits that got cut. Whoever did that. The council for not hurrying up and rehousing these people. Identification? I'm the only one I have, yeah. Bus cars, bank cars. It's a very distressing situation, especially to people who are maybe more vulnerable. They need a little bit more support, and I must say I was happy to give it in any way I could, and I, I really did feel for that couple. I don't know. Right, Mr. Peanut. Peanut. Is there anything else we can help you with, carrying uh, down? Sorry? Couldn't go three, three months' rent to go sorry well. Yeah. If only so. Yeah, very well, in fact. Bus pass, Dolly. You've got your bus pass. I don't know. The eviction is almost complete, but Steve and Ben are concerned for the couple's welfare. Is this going to be enough to suffer a couple of days? That's mine, yeah. To be honest, mate, I've, well, I've got some underwear, you've got some T-shirts. Uh, I think it's short. Yeah, it's going to be cold out, so you want to wrap up warm. It is very cold, sir. The worst jobs you get is when, when you're involved in having to evict older people from their properties. They don't have the means to draw in money from anywhere else to top up their rent or anything like that. It was one of those days where you wished you was a different house five miles away. Mrs. Norman is concerned about leaving her belongings in the house. Come on, 
Oh, that's fine. Oh, that's fine. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We won't get them done. We won't get them done. I promise you. Nothing's going to be touched. You can make arrangements to come back. If you have problems, you can call us. Our numbers are on the door. Yeah. You can take that number down. I can come back. I'll get back. Don't you worry about that. We might have lost this one. You know, it's only a battle, though. There has been a rise in evictions oh, since benefit warfare. gaps came in force because people on benefits <laughs> don't have the money or won't pay the difference in the rents. The likes of Mr and Mrs Norman paid into the system and in their time of need, they're not getting the help that they should do. So the council should think on that and help the elderly, the vulnerable. Mr. and Mrs. Norman's hour to pack and leave the house is up. Good luck, Peter. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Seriously. I know you're only doing your job. You, it's, you it's, take care. It's the way that it's at. Don't see. Yeah. No, OK. All right, darling. Off we go. Take then. care. All right, all right. The couple now need to find emergency accommodation or could face the night on the streets. Terrible, really, a couple like that. The council should do something before, shouldn't they, really? This case really did hit both me and Dad. We was just completely shocked. I went home that night thinking, where are they now? It was a real horrible situation, because they were completely were genuine people. Steve and Ben have faced a heartbreaking situation. But in Stuart and Vic's next case, Toby Crump. Like, when did they start doing all of this? Just go to the next episode. Like, for each death amongst young people aged 15 to 24 have more than trebled in the last 10 years. The council definitely don't care about 15 to 24. Y'all, yeah, young. <laughs> more than half have personal debts including payday loans and credit card bills. And many are turning to their families for help. Hey, okay. Now we're just dead of 1,200 each, I mean 12,000 each. Sonny Bolton, eh? Bolton, Lancashire. High Court Enforcement Agents Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are on their way to serve a writ on a young debtor. Any idea what date you think it could be? Uh, yeah, well, the defendant is Miss Amy Evans. Right. Student nurse Amy Evans owes just over £750. But this isn't the first time Vic has tried to recover the debt. Red door. So it's the red door there. Oh, stick it up there. Looks like a nice house, though. You know, it looks like it's well maintained. So, Miss Amy Evans is still here. Yeah, well, yeah, it could be that. The last time Vic met Amy, she agreed to make monthly instalments to she re. Missed the payment. Pay the debt. But she's defaulted, and now Vic is back with Stuart to recover payment in full or seize goods if Amy can't or won't pay. Oh, sounds good, Amy. Oh, someone in, mate. Is it? Yep. Very good. Hi, good morning, sir. My name is Mr. Victor, I'm a court enforcement agent. I've actually been here before. Yeah, yeah. Amy lives at home with her mum and dad. But it's her uncle who answers the door. Is she about? She's in bed at the moment. She's just finished the shift. Be able to wait. My cat. My cat just took her number two. It's like he doesn't care. He doesn't care about my well-being. He doesn't care about my nose. Nothing. Nothing but I like. It's ridiculous. Hey, corrupt makes like I said, we're here now to execute a high court writ. Why? I, I've got to discuss it with her. Her name's on the writ, sir. The writ allows the agents to make peaceful entry into the house. Hang on, I'm not giving you permission. Yeah, it's like I said, we, we're here now to take control of the writ control. So like I said, I'll stay here. I won't go any further. But it is important that we speak to Amy. Amy! You better get down here, huh? What the hell? What's this thing? Hi, Amy. Uh, <laughs> Amy, speak. don't act surprised. You know what it is. Am I could enforce an agent? Yeah. It's an outstanding balance of seven hundred and fifty pounds and ninety pence that needs to be paid today. Seven fifty point nine zero. There is the. Uh, 
amount on there, 750.90. We need payment in full today. So I, I, mean, I, I don't was, think I was it's paying much. it though, monthly, 100 pounds. Yeah. Well, you must have stopped or something. Have we been paying it? Yeah. yeah. You can't sit there and lie, Amy. They right there in your face. Proof of payment. I've got, I, I think I was transferring money every month from my online bank. I was going to check in five yeah. As Amy claims she's been paying off her loan, Stuart goes to check his paperwork. At some point, you must have missed a few payments, you see. They weren't seen as odd otherwise, so... But the documentation shows that Amy has defaulted on her payment plan. As you can see here, Amy, payments have been made. 7th, yeah. 8888889. The office have been ringing since the 30th of October. No reply, no reply, no reply, no reply, no reply. So there's been many times we've tried to contact. Yeah, no, I don't answer any word, or no. Well, if you don't yeah. answer the phone, then no. that, that's the reason why we come back. There's a lot of young adults out there that are embarrassed of their situation and don't really know how to deal with it. If you want to blatantly ignore it and wait for a high court enforcement agent to come on the door, that's what we'll do. Yeah. It is what it is. She's As Amy oh, guys, hasn't please, been keeping me. up with her payments, Vic needs her to raise the full £750 she owes. But there's a problem. Do you want to give your dad a call? No, because he's going to kill me. Yeah. yeah that's I've that's got a choice. <laughs> In the nicest possible way, I know it might be hard. Something like that to be done, Amy. I know, but what are going to do? You're not going to your dad, won't you? Oh, he's going to... Hold on, my God. This is ridiculous. Hold on, I can't smell this. Well. During Vic's last visit, Amy's father agreed to pay back some of his daughter's debt, on the condition she paid off the rest. She's reluctant to ask him for more help, but the agents need to settle the case today, one way or another. In 10 minutes, I'm going to have to start doing inventory of goods. And what's stage. your inventory of goods entail? It's basically, I'd list everything that's in the property that's of value um, to be removed. Um, it's then removed, it's then stored for seven days before it's sold to public auction. Yeah, but it's not a property. Well, not... We need to see proof of that. Yeah. What do you mean? Because I don't buy it. All I've got is what is in my bedroom. Yes. Which is, most probably your mum's, but you'll have to have a sales invoice, or she'll have to have a sales invoice to prove that she's paid for it, and you didn't. <laughs> and who keeps his eats like that? Well. <sighs> Amy. That's solid, because nobody keeps receipts like that needs to prove that the possessions in the house are owned by her parents. If she can't, they could be taken away to offset her debt. But Stuart has even more bad news. If we do an inventory of goods, it, it goes up to the £1,380, because we even then technically seized the goods. I'm afraid. The pressure is on. Hold on now, Stuart. You got to bring your dad cop. You got to. You know, he's like, what if he's not got it? He's not got loads of money just standing there. I know, I know, but. What's it? Something's got to be done. I don't know why young people think that if they're not going to pay it back, that it's going to go away. But debt unfortunately follows you. And wherever you are registered to live, that's where we'll go to collect the debt from. After 10 minutes, there's still no sign of any payment. Stu Don't put your name on paperwork. Stuart's patience is running out. She isn't really doing much apart from taxing, 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 taxing. And so I think it's about time there. We're going to have to start putting her foot down and uh, assessing what we can take control of to sell at public auction if she can't raise the funds. Right, guys, I'm going to have to start taking control of the goods, I'm afraid. See what we can do. 
Amy's time to raise some funds is up. Stuart starts to make a list of goods. All these were mothers, all these. I need to see some documentation or proof or something like that. As Stuart makes the inventory, Amy finally decides to call her father for help. Dad, don't, because you're making it worse for me. Just please don't. They're not going to take anything if I get the money. I didn't want to ring you up, Dad. No, he's going to pay you. What amount? The 750. Amy's father has agreed to pay the debt. But as the agents have started the inventory... Oh, come on, Stuart. You know you can waive that. You ain't even got all the way deep into it. He probably gonna waive it. It might not be enough. This is not our first season. We four seasons deep. We know y'all can delete that. Stuart, Amy's dad is willing to make a payment, but he can only get the 750. Right. I've explained that we have gone to the sales stage, obviously. Yeah. Oh, you're, 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 it's fine, uh, best Honestly, year. I've been yeah. with people. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> does it say you pay all the phone coming? He's got that. Oh, He's bringing it here. Are you sure you can get it? Yeah, yeah, I'm positive. Okay. Oh, yeah. Right, okay. So sorry. With the offer of £750 in cash, Stuart and Vic decide to waive the extra fee. Obviously. They wait inside as Amy goes to meet her father. Everybody needs help every now and then, but some people do tend to borrow and then have a habit of not paying back. And it's a shame that it has to be put on the parents' shoulders to step up for something that isn't their mistake. 15 minutes later, Amy and her father return. Yeah, uh, are, you, are you able to make, to make payments or are yeah, it's just £750.90 in total. I'll do your receipt now. What, what's that? Dad, mean? I don't want you. I've just asked you, please, don't. Just please, I don't for? want it for. What is it altogether? What's it for? I'm curious. Did they say it? Did we, did, or I, I might have missed it. 750 750 and 90 pence. That's 500 there, Vic. That's it there. Oh, okay. Death can definitely bring out the best and worst in people. We find in a, in a lot of cases where parents help out their kids because that's what parents do, if they can. But death can definitely definitely bring people together or or tear them apart. It's all done now. What? Luke, we've all made mistakes. <laughs> well, like I said, we'll we'll get out of your way. <laughs> My bad, G. Like, come on now. Uh, somebody with an ugly cry gonna get me every time. Even everybody ugly cries, but I'm just here to laugh at it. That's all. My bad. I don't mean to laugh at your pain or anything like that. It's just, it's just, it was funny, kind of. But the situation is not, you know. This is my outlook on debt, man. Don't put anything in credit. Don't put, don't do none of that. If you can't pay for it up front, then it's not meant for you to have, honestly. You're not there in life yet. Just take your steps to gradually be able to get where you want to be. Don't put nothing on credit because that means you can't pay it. Simple. If you ain't got it, don't get it. I'm sure we're the last people you want to see at the Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Now, if you are legitimately trying to build credit so you could, like, get a house or something later in life, okay, <laughs> get you a little credit card. Start putting stuff that you have money for, though, on that credit card, like gas. You get gas every day, right? Put gas on your credit card, then pay it back at the end of the month. Like, the money you would be putting in there, put it, like, to the side. You see, that's the hard thing. Y'all see money to the side, and y'all think, oh, I got money to the side. No, you don't. That's for gas. <laughs> Chill. Across the UK, small to medium-sized businesses are currently owed £67 billion in unpaid invoices. Chasing companies for late payments through the courts is costing these businesses an extra £11 billion every year, forcing many into bankruptcy. Dang, why did they put a whole little 
little paragraph like we're supposed to read it quickly. Nearly a quarter of small or medi and medium-sized businesses have faced bankruptcy due to late payment. Chipping Norton, Oxfordshire. High Court Enforcement Agents Paul Bowhill and Steve Pink yeah. Get the gang together. Uh, are on their way to recover a debt of over £30,000. Mm, they're going for big money. We're going to argue about this, ain't we? Somebody oh, to a supplier. Argue. Last time I went to a place like this in the country, a man drove a, <laughs> a tractor at me and started having a go at me. <laughs> he didn't see that. Where was that at? What episode? <laughs> yeah. The debtor is a world-renowned racing car team. Well, it's, it's 30000 Pounds plus, and it's the uh, Lotus Formula One team. Ah, Lotus Formula One. They gotta be shite. Lotuses are shite. Mm. If Lotus Formula One can't or won't pay, the agents have the right to remove goods to yeah, cover. Right, they got the money. The only thing they're gonna run into is an employee who think they're a manager and gonna overdo their job for the debt where we're actually going would appear to be a technical centre. So, test bed engines and things like that. Might be a research facility, which means they're going to be really tight on security. Well, just have to use your silver tongue to get us through the gate. Pause. Or possibly a crowbar. <laughs> All go. visitors must report security. Oh, this is going to be good, isn't it? The entrance to the facility is protected by an electric security gate. Which is exactly as we thought it might be. They shut the gates, see, look. The more fuss we have, the better. My name is Paul Bowhill. I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. Okay. We have a writ to serve against Formula One. Okay. Is there someone with power and authority? That lady there. That we could speak to. Yeah, have you, have you got a copy of the document? I have, yeah. Would you like to come over to reception? Okay, this is looking real friendly. This job it was very different. We was going to a, a huge, complex, multi-million pound company. Security everywhere. It was a different job than the normal run of the mill. Lotus Formula One team's financial troubles have been widely publicised. And the agent's visit hasn't come as a surprise. This isn't the first writ the company has had to deal with recently. Hello. Hello. I'm Julie. Hi there. Who are you here on behalf of? Musset Engineering. Right, OK. That's that is something, grand. yeah, it's known to us. We completely honour the debt, want to honour the debt. But Jolene, the site manager, has some bad news for Paul. Lotus Formula One reportedly owes £2.7 million pounds in unpaid taxes, and they've already taken action. What's happened is, is that HMRC uh, yep. have done an application for administration, which is this document here, right. and we're held under the moratorium for this application. And what they've been advising us to do is to make any High Court Enforcement officers aware of the situation. OK. The moratorium means that Lotus Formula One are protected from settling any debts while they're being pushed towards administration by Revenue and Customs. And I know it looks very glamorous that we've gone to a race, but trust me, it's on an absolute wing and a prayer. Yeah, it's OK, we understand that. Yeah. The odds seem stacked against them, but will Paul and Steve find another way to collect the £30,000 debt? It does seem like there ain't no other way, it's over! And will they end up driving away with a dream car? Because we had this vision of going driving out through the gate with a Formula oh, One car. Really? On the back. Oh, but, right, OK. But, yeah. Well, what was this? Shot to Half pieces scale. now, that. Court enforcement agents, Paul Bowhill, famous racing... We don't need it. We completely honour this, is that... Lotus Formula One owed revenue and customs... But why is there a recap right now? million we pounds just in it. unpaid taxes. And the company was facing administration proceedings in the High Court. Most financial activity had been suspended, including paying off its creditors. 
We had this vision of going driving out through the gate with a Formula oh, One car really? on the back. Oh, but, right, OK. But, <laughs> uh, ma'am. But with a writ to collect £30,000, Paul doesn't want to walk away empty-handed. It's the customs who started this railway. Yeah, and we hoped that what would have happened is that Renault would have come <clears> aboard, <throat> our funding would all be in place, we'd have had time to make payments to all our suppliers. Jolene claims the debt will be settled once the new shareholder, Renault, is on board. But Paul wants to resolve this case today. That's just 30, that's big. in house IP course, yeah. to make sure that we've got the basis covered. He calls an insolvency advisor. Hello, yeah, it's Paul Bowhill. Is we've just turned up for a thirty thousand pound writ. The moratorium order we've got a copy of, and we've also got a copy of the court papers. And the hearing was adjourned to the eighteenth. At which point either the customs will come to an agreement for things to be resolved, or then put it into administration. So you think we could still sign a control goods agreement? The advisor tells Paul that they are entitled to seize goods after all, as long as they leave them on site until after the insolvency hearing takes place. It's nice to have the backup, the reality. Yeah. Forewarned is forearmed. Right, that's lovely. Thank you, bye. Now Paul must tell site manager Joe Lean the news. I've just spoken to my advisor. Okay. She said, just take a Formula One car anyway. OK. There must be an item here of value that we can identify and photograph. Could you do a, a warrant of control on something? That's right. Yeah. That's, uh, that's yeah. exactly what it is. Yeah. So you, you, know, you know the job. I'm really impressed. <laughs> you got the job. <laughs> do like to join us. See, it's fun and games, but it ain't really your money. See, these are W employees. Like, y'all not overdoing it. Y'all know what it is, man. Just go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Like, go ahead, get your little picture. It ain't my money. Shoot. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly a control gun to, yeah. be to use the right terminology. That's OK. We'll, we'll be <clears throat> happy to do that. That's not, not a problem at all. Now Steve and Paul need to search for assets that will offset the £30,000 debt. But there's a problem. Lot. As well as owing millions in unpaid taxes, Lotus Formula One has over £600,000 worth of extra debt to other creditors. They've and some assets on some site stuff. have already been ring-fenced. The only asset that we've really got that we can show you is a show car. That's fine. Um, it, they're valued around £290,000 okay. in our books. That's all right. Um, and we can take you down to them now. Yeah, we'll the agents uh -huh. are in luck. A show car is still available and will more than cover the £30,000 on the writ. The type of car that we normally see is, is the family saloon or a works van or anything. It might be more extravagant, but the car that we were presented with was, was a pure racing machine. Let me see it. Paul and Steve step into one of the company's ah, workshops. Okay. Relax, we're not taking anything. Will it be all right to tow it behind a transit? Do you want to get in? <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> you want a family album, wouldn't it? You've seen it, you're in. God, help us. I do like nice cars, and it was nice to actually see the Formula One car and actually looking at the engineering that takes place to get those things working. Can you take a photo? Because you know where you're looking. Just yeah, 91. The agents find the replica racing car they've been offered. Yeah, that's good enough. Once listed on no, a writ of control, yeah, it can be it. seized if the debt is not paid off. But Jolene is concerned. I don't want to sign it. You're OK. I really have to sign it. If anybody gets smart over it, you can give them my phone number, the mobile number yeah. on there, because it's quite simple, really. We understand all the ins and outs, which is why we're here, because I've been involved in insolvency for 25 years. The case has been resolved for now. It's all the best. Take care. The agents must wait to see whether Renault step in as they'd hoped and pay the company's creditors. Thank you. Hopefully. She ain't want to sign it just in case they don't step in and like, dang, who signed away the, the, the show car? Oh, sorry. Okay. If the deal doesn't happen, the agents could be back to take away one of the most unusual assets 
they've ever seized. We achieved the best result that we could get out of the circumstances. Because there's a pending administration in the background, we were able to take photographs and say, this Formula One car, it is now under our control until such a time as A, the debt is paid, or B, the administration kicks in. The rule has been acquired and controlled the shareholders and loaders of Fontaine. Okay. He's from Liverpool, not Mercy Tunnel. Three houses. Birmingham, it is. A lot of culture there, so enjoy it. Next time. No, sir, you know next time, man. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Make sure y'all sub if this y'all first time watching, man, and y'all not sub, man. We almost at 60,000, man. I appreciate that, man. What, 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 like, there is no reward without the grind. And I appreciate that type sh You get me.